welcome to the worship service of the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. Located just two blocks west of Tower Square near downtown Marion, this vibrant and energetic church meets weekly for high-energy, Christ-centered services. Enjoy the warm fellowship of the First Baptist family. We pray God's Spirit will be evident in our service and that you will want to come and see what First Baptist of Marion is all about. Welcome to Marion First Baptist Church. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, just want to do a quick welcome and... Uh, just say thank you all for coming out on the, the, the better side of time change. Hopefully I'm not up here on the other side of time change. Uh, it might be a little droggier. But if you guys will, we're going to pray and then we're going to greet one another. So if you guys will, let's, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for just another day in your house, God, that we can freely come and we can worship you. And we can meet here, and God, that you're going to speak through, um, that you've already spoken through the Sunday school teachers and the lessons, God, and that uh, I, I pray that anything that is said through me today is that you, it is you and nothing from me. Lord, I, I thank you for every person that's watching online, on YouTube, that may even watch this a couple years from now, Lord, that they are blessed because of what you are doing and not because of what we are doing. So, Lord, be with us in this time of worship and uh, just, just greeting and this, the message that you have uh, shared with me, God. And we thank you for your son and what he did through the cross. Amen. So, if you guys will, let's turn and greet one another as Brian leads us in another one. <laughs> Hello again.
on this morning. As you're being seated, it's so great to be able to come together as a family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and to celebrate how great He is and what He means to each one of us in our lives. But every day is not necessarily a good day. Sometimes things can go south. You know what that means? Sometimes we can have troubles come into our lives and we just can't quite make it through by ourselves. But as Christians, we can be thankful that He, God, is big enough to meet our needs and to help us through those problems we have. John's going to help us out on this next song. I got a heart that's full of faith-filled airplanes. There are mountains ahead that I can't move by myself. But I know when I'm weak, he's strong. When I can barely breathe, there's still a song. Even though it's hard right now, I'm not here on my own. When it seems it can't be done, I know God is I can run the I'm going to run. I know God is big enough. He'll finish everything he starts. Meet us right here where we are. I can feel faith rising up. Cause I know God is big enough. Oh.
I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself now that I've already done the welcome. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am the youth pastor here. Um, I'm Madison Presswood. I've been here. Actually, uh, today is two months and two days for me, so I appreciate you guys putting up with me for two days, or two months and two days for me, especially the kids, so I appreciate that. Um, I was literally on stage up here 12 weeks ago, and this jacket fit a lot better then. <laughs> um, I've heard it say, uh, I've heard people say that uh, uh, you can tell when a husband is happy, happily married because his clothes start getting a little tighter. And uh, I, we didn't really get married here, but uh, I'll tell you that my jacket and my clothes are getting a little tighter, so I, I do feel welcome. I appreciate you guys and everything that you have done coming into my office, having conversations. I've had handwritten notes sent to us saying that, hey, uh, we're blessed to have you here. We are thankful that you're here. Uh, so that means more to me than you guys could ever know. Uh, I've got those in my office, and I'm going to keep those. So I, I just want to say thank you guys for doing that for us. It means a lot. Um, <laughs> when Pastor asked me to come up here and speak, 
Uh, he said, well, uh, give an update on the youth, let them know how the youth are doing, what things are going on, and uh, just kind of go from there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So I am, I'm going to, it's a little different today. Uh, we are going to talk about brokenness. Um, but I just want to kind of give a little update on the kids and how things are going. Again, I have been here for uh, two months and two days, and they haven't voted me out yet, so I appreciate that. We've got some great kids. Uh, if you're in here in the youth group, just raise your hand real quick. You don't have to do anything. Just raise your hand if you're in the youth group. Some here, some there. Okay. That's right. Okay, yeah. You didn't raise your hand. I see you over there, but you didn't raise your hand. Um, I am proud of these guys. I can't tell you how much it means to me just to have three of them come down and sit next to me. I know guys don't cry because we're big, bad, and tough, but I almost cried when they came down and sat by me, so thanks a lot, guys, uh, making tomorrow, or today uh, just a little bit tougher. Now, um, just as pa Pastor said, give a, a little bit of an update. So we've been able to do some events uh, here. We've been able to go to a couple different places. We did uh, Youth Encounter. Kids, guys, did you have fun at Youth Encounter? Four of them had fun at Youth Encounter, so <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> and we had uh, we had a couple hundred kids come in here and eat dinner and go back over there. We had a, a great speaker, and we had uh, an illusionist come and speak, and not something you'd think that you would uh, hear or see at a Christian thing, but it, it was it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, the kids are going to know what I'm talking about. I'm sure I'm still trying to make it snow with a napkin and water. I haven't got that figured out yet, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do that, yes, so we'll, we'll, we'll ask your kids about that, and that'll make more sense to you guys. Um, other stuff that we've got going on, I'll tell you what, my favorite night, not that Wednesdays and Sunday mornings are not my favorite, but Sunday nights, um, those are my favorite because we can get a little bit more personal. We do a couple of worship songs, and then um, we, we circle it up. We get all the chairs together, it doesn't matter if there's 30 kids in there or 10 kids in there, we circle it up a little bit more intimate, we can see each other and start talking and having the conversation. It's usually one or two questions, and then I get to be quiet because the kids just take over from there. I know that's not why you guys are paying me to be here for them to talk, but that is, to me, what it's about, is listening to them, seeing what's going on in their lives. You know, we're talking, I'm going to try to get to brokenness today, and if you guys have dinner reservations at 11, go ahead and push those back. Um, I've got 14 pages of notes, and we're going to get through them. <laughs> Some of you guys already tuned me out. I was told, hey, stay between the piano and the organ this time, so I'm trying to do that. <laughs> so camera crew, be on it. So, um, you know, just a couple more things on the youth. We've, we've got some upcoming events that you guys could be praying for. Um, we have something that they do every year called Camp Jericho, and it's at Camp Jericho in Goreville. And we're going to go down there and we're going to have uh, Ducoin First. Their youth praise band is going to come and they're going to uh, do praise band music, praise music for us. Um, unfortunately, they have to listen to me speak um, for those lessons. And then um, we're actually, you know, we're going to have some games and fun stuff and just, it's going to be a good time. But I'm excited because there's two other churches coming down and they get a chance to to hang out with these kids in other situations, to see that in other towns that kids still have junk going on. They still come from a home, uh, whether it's in Ducoin or Sessor or wherever, that uh, maybe there's a single parent, or maybe they've got an alcoholic situation in the family, and uh, that, that we can come together and as believers, or even non-believers, um, for some of the kids that may be there, that, hey, I'm not alone. I'm not by myself. So we're looking forward to that. Um, I tell Brian, he's got an awesome group of kids coming up for choir. Uh, I say that because when we have worship upstairs in the room, uh, I kind of stand in the back, and that's for a couple reasons. Uh, we have some wonderful singers in the youth choir. Uh, they, they really do. They, it sounds awesome when they're up there singing. And I stand behind them, one, just so I can listen to them sing, um, and so they can't hear me sing. Uh, so I am literally blessed by going out there and listening to those guys, and I just I, I look forward to that every time we meet because I get to hear them singing and praising. So you got a good group coming to you, Brian. Um, what I what I really want to say is that the the cohesion of the group, them welcoming 
me in. They didn't have to do that. And for two months and two days, I've worked on that. And uh, I feel welcome, not just with the congregation, but with the kids. Hey, how's Tatum doing? He's doing great. He is. Um, well, let us know if we can be praying about anything. Absolutely. You know, so I, I love hearing that stuff. Or, hey, where's Landry? Where are the kids at today? Uh, so being welcome here, I, f- I feel that. So I appreciate that, not just from the, the congregation, but the kids as well. <clears throat> now, I said I love the, the intimate, the circling up, and then talking about those personal lessons. I want you guys to know that when it comes to these kids, uh, brokenness is part of their lives, absolutely part of their lives. And we have prayed together in that room as a whole group, or we have broken off one of my favorite things to do, and I think it makes them really uncomfortable, and that's why I do it sometimes, is I say, hey, let's get in a, a, a triangle, if you will, just a couple kids, or let's go in different places in the room, and you guys pray together. Well, I get some out of their comfort zone, and that's exactly where we need to be, out of our comfort zone. But we have prayed together. We have definitely laughed together, mostly at me, at my expense, and we have cried together. I think these kids have brought me to tears more times than they know, and I, again, I'm a man, so I hide that because tears aren't tough. Um, but I am absolutely blessed to be with these guys and with you guys, so again, uh, I, I thank you for that. Now today, I tie that up. I just want to say this one last thing about them. We have an awesome group. They are interested in so many cool things uh, that we have kind of in motion right now. Um, this, this spring, we're looking forward to doing some mission work. I've got a couple missionaries that I know of that are going to come and speak to the kids um, just to get that fire lit a little bit. And then uh, we're going to be in here next Sunday when they come back from the Dominican. And just the more mission-minded kids we have, just that, that fire slowly building. So if you want to pray for our group, you can pray for that. They have the hearts for missions. They just need the trip to go on. Now, we've got some stuff in Marion that we can do, and we appreciate anything that you guys have given us. I've had a couple people come up to me and say, hey, you guys could do this or do this, and that's what we need. Don't forget, I'm the new guy, and I still don't live in Marion, and I promise that I will say this until we do it, but if anybody needs a vacation home in Ducoin, please let me know. <laughs> we are uh, we're needing to get rid of that. So, Long story short, <laughs> thank you. Um, now today I wanted to encourage, I wanted to encourage you guys just about as much as I could with the time that we've got. I want to encourage, but first I think what we need to do is realize that we need to be encouraged. Um, and that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but right now I want to say uh, another part of me coming here is getting to know people is that I've had a chance to get to know, know the joy singers. And if you're a joy singer in here, can you just make some noise right now? Where are you at, joy singers? I love this group of people. I really do. My first time in there, I think I was talked into picking Brian up and uh, forced to sing. I, was, I said, no, I don't sing. I sit in the back. I just listen make a joyful noise, and then I was handed books and said, no, you're singing. Okay, I'm singing. So I can't say no to him, but one of the most encouraging things in there that I've seen, and they got all kinds of quotes in there, they got all kinds of signs in there, one of my favorites is, uh, <laughs> if Jesus is in your heart, some of you guys already know where I'm going with this, if Jesus is in your heart, please notify your face. And it's got a picture of this dog, just this grueling dog in there. And I, I absolutely love it because I, I need that reminder sometimes. That's encouragement. Hey, let your face know that Jesus is still in there, man. Okay? Amen? Anybody get there? Okay. I love that. So today, if I can, I'm going to try to get through this. And I want to I try to encourage through brokenness. You say, well, how in the world is that possible? Well, just being with the kids... And just talking to some of the people in here and seeing the prayer requests, I know that brokenness is a part of you guys' lives. I know it's a part of the kids' lives. But for me, it's so easy to just cover that up or look at other people and say, oh man, they're worse off than I am, so it's not really that bad. I don't need to worry about it. Um, 
It won't take long today. When you guys leave here, if you're going out to eat, if they're still open by the time I get done, um, you guys are going to get out of here and you're going to go and you're probably going to see a hostess somewhere. Uh, you're going to have a waiter or a waitress. And I guarantee they've got some brokenness in their life. I guarantee it. But they're going to hide it. They're not going to let you see it. That's their job. They're there to get paid and be friendly and uh, not let feelings and emotions come out like that. But I want you guys to know that most often when I see brokenness, when I see something that's been just absolutely torn apart and uh, just, I just don't know if it's really worthy of being used, is looking in the mirror. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I don't know if you guys can look in the mirror and say, I'm all right. Or I know, I, I hear what you're saying. I look in the mirror and I, I feel that too. So when you guys leave here, think about that. As you're going out, think about those people that you're going to come in contact with. Now, um, I promise I do have a point with all this. And it's that we fail every single day at being our own savior. I got one amen. I want to keep going regardless of how many, but we fail every single day at being our own savior. We cannot do it on our own. We can't. Now with that brokenness, it, for me it comes self-defeat, and then I think about, well, I can't, literally I cannot do anything else until I, I, I fix that one problem, and I think partially part of that is because I'm a guy, and that's just how guys work. But I lose confidence, and it's not in, not in God, but it's in me, because I've taken it on myself to be able to do these things. Now, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to ask people's opinions. I wanted to know what brokenness really was, so I went to the most reliable source of wisdom that you could possibly find. So I, I got on Facebook. Um, and I, that's a joke. Thank you for laughing. I got on Facebook and for the simple fact that I, I wanted to see, because I've got Christian friends, I've got friends that aren't Christians, I wanted to see what everybody had to say when it comes to this, because it's not just someone that's lost that's going to have brokenness, is it? i got one person. It's going to be Christians that are going to have broken lives as well, right? A couple people answered, actually a lot of people answered on there. I'm going to read just a couple to you. When you feel... This is one uh, lady's response here. When you feel you are at your lowest possible and there is nothing that you can do or any other human can do to fix it, only God's grace can carry you through it. I said, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Another guy had to say, um, had to say, he said, I think the body can be damaged, the mind can be scarred, but brokenness is of the spirit. All right, we're getting deep. We're getting there. Another girl said, brokenness has always led to faith-based action in my life. So even if I dread seeing myself for who I really am, I hope, I have hope in Jesus to make me more like him through it. Wow. That one hit me. And then the last one here, I, don't, I didn't really get it. Somebody just posted a picture of a Cubs fan. I don't know what that was all about. But <laughs> we'll figure that out. We'll pray for him. You know, brokenness, it obviously it means different things to different people. You know, I was thinking, what, what does that look like? What would brokenness look like to God or uh, to, to Christians? And I'm, I'm looking and, and just be broken, to be crushed and torn. But that's in sin. Okay? So broken, crushed, torn, in sin. Now, if we will look in here, it says God breaks those who are proud and rebellious. Now, we're talking about exodus in our Sunday school lessons, and then who, who, who needed broken there? Pharaoh, right? He needed broken to let his people out and go. And who did that? Did it happen? Absolutely. Did God do it? Absolutely. So the proud, the rebellious, usually... And I say this because I was proud. I was rebellious. That was exactly where I was at. I didn't need broken. I had everything together. I was good. I didn't need it. Now, what else does the Bible say? If you guys go to Psalm 34, 18, I, I love this one. Just a short, simple verse. Psalm 34, 18. I'm sure some of you guys have went to this verse, read this verse, looked at it. 
The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. That's not always easy to say. It's not always easy to hear. It's not always easy to read because you know what? I am hurt so bad, I just don't feel him, I don't see him, none of that. Is he there? Oh, no, no, see, this is gonna have to be a little bit accurate. Is he there? Yes. Okay, this is for you just as much as it is for me. <laughs> I, I appreciate the crickets in the room. <laughs> I love it. Just a tad late, but I love it. I'm going to keep going anyways. I love my youth people, by the way. Can I, we just give my youth helpers a... <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> oh, man, I'm hot up here. <laughs> it is warm in here. Anyways, here's what I need you guys to do, if you will. Take a deep breath with me. Let it out. Now what are we doing breathing exercises for? Let's do it one more time. Take a deep breath in. I let that out. Now when I started writing this a couple weeks ago, it's because I was on the way to work. I had nothing. I was praying, God, I don't want to do this. I ain't got nothing. You need to talk to me right now. I got to work. I sat down. He's like, start typing. One of the first things that came out was take a deep breath. I'm like, why did I do that? And then the word purpose popped in. Purpose. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to do that a couple times. I want you to think about it. That breath was a gift from God. Whether you are a believer or not, you still have purpose if you have breath in your lungs. Amen? Amen. I don't want to lose, lose track of that. Everybody turn around, look at your neighbor, make sure everybody's still breathing. Two thousand seventeen I was uh I was assistant volunteer track coach. So I was highly paid and that was at uh Ducoin High School uh for the girls track team and um we were at Nashville at a track meet and this girl, one of our girls, was giving advice to another jumper and I overheard it and I went over and talked to uh the head coach, which happens to be in this room today, and I said, You know what? I just heard. I said she's giving advice. I said, if she could just listen, she'd probably be all right, and she'd be a good jumper. And I'll never forget what he said. He looked at me, he said, you know what, sometimes it's hardest to take your own advice. I said, okay, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. And I say that because this morning, I am absolutely 100% out of my comfort zone. Absolutely. You guys kind of chuckled that I'm out of my comfort zone. You guys came up here and shook my hands right now, you'd have to use a towel to wipe it off. It is hot in here, though. That's all right. But <laughs> I do say that, and it's not because of how many people's in here. It, it, the TV thing doesn't really help, but it's not because of all the people. But guys, I've never preached on a Sunday morning, and you should never take teaching the Word lightly. So I have prayed for the last two months, God, you, you're going to have to show up and speak through me because I, I don't want it to be from me, none of it. Sure, I've got examples and stories, but I don't want any of it to be of me. Deep breath. Purpose. Y'all still with me? Everybody still with me? Everybody still breathing? All right, I'm going to keep going then. Um, now, some of you guys are probably saying, hey, don't we pay you to speak? <laughs> no, you pay him, Bob, that, and then I just get lucky and get to come up here once in a while. And I, I get to be with the youth. I love that, and I, the small groups and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm out of my comfort zone. Um, absolutely, and I tell you what, I had four pretty good reasons that I told Bob. He asked me, and I think it was before he ended his sentence, I said no. <laughs> I said no, 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 no thanks. Can't do it. I don't have anything on my wall that says doctor or w anything, nothing. Actually, I got a thing that I need to hang up that says my last name, but anyways. I had four pretty good reasons. One of those is that I've never preached on a Sunday morning. Okay. I'm only 31 years old, so what would I possibly have to say to you guys that's going to make a difference 
or matter. Okay, third one, how can God actually use me? The junk that I've done in my life, how are you going to get up on a Sunday morning and talk to these people about anything and have a purpose? You know, the next one was, uh, the fourth one, I, I actually used this. I said, no, nope, I don't have a suit that fits anymore, so I'm not going to get up there. No, thank you. Next. I, I went to Matthew 28, 19, and we've all heard this verse. Matthew 28, 19. What's it say? What's it say? I've had, I've, I've listened to this, I've read this verse so, so many times about going and making disciples. You know what it doesn't say? It does not say, once you become a Christian, sit back, get a nice lazy boy, and don't share anything. Write stuff down, you know, listen to podcasts or whatever, but don't share anything. That's what it does not say. What it says is go and make disciples, baptizing in all nations, right? It doesn't say sit back and stop. Now, I, I bring that up because we went to uh, Youth Encounter here in Marion, and the speaker was Zane Black. Well, I, I mean, he's still Zane Black, but great speaker, and he was talking about all the junk he had in his life. He sold drugs. He did drugs. I think he went to Bible college, uh, paying for it by selling drugs, uh, had an abortion with a girlfriend, and I thought, man, he just came to know Christ, and he didn't stop. He used that. He used that junk in his life. Now, I want you guys to just take a few minutes. You don't have to stand up and share. I just want you to take a few minutes because I know every person in this room has got junk in their life. I know you do because if you're anything like me, you got a whole closet full. Got a whole closet full. Being up here, I'm out of my comfort zone. And God, God laid this one on me. It's kind of like a mic drop for God. i hit by that mic. We are called to do great works in faith, and God will work through those who show up in faith. I'm going to read it again, okay? I'm going to read it again. We are called to do great works in faith, and God will work through those who show up in faith. Out of my comfort zone, I am up here for no other reason to tell you guys that, hey, I am here. I am trying to encourage you. The one discouraging thing for me is all the junk that I've been through, and I didn't want to come up here and talk because that's what I am reminded of every time I have an opportunity. Every time. The devil's like, no, man, you're not smart enough. Don't go up there. Nothing on your wall. Don't do it. You can't do this. Mm -mm. Every time. And when he asked me, I said no. But I, I said, you know what, Bob? It's going to be out of my comfort zone. I'm there. And then shortly after that, I went to the bathroom and was scared to death. <laughs> I started praying that day. And I, I literally, I had to pray every single day. You're going to have to show up, God, that day. I know you will. I know you will. You're going to have to. Um, please make this work. So, deep breath. Come on. Let it out. Purpose. Purpose. You guys have that breath in your lungs. I'm going to keep going. Let's look a little bit of, uh, let's look at a few people real quick in the Bible. Okay? Uh, in Exodus 3, 9 through 12. We've all went through this recently. I'll give you a second to get there. Exodus 3, 9 through 12. And then after that, we're going to be in Exodus 4, 10 through 12. Exodus 3, 9 through 12. So it says, And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are opposing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Well, I've heard that a million times. But, but, probably not the best response that Moses could say to God. But Moses said to God, Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Anyone ever feel that way? God wants you to do something, wants you to go to the next cubicle or to your neighbor's house, and hey, just, just go talk. Just open your mouth. I'm going to put words in it. Well, 
I got junk, right? Can't do it. So what, what, what happens here? Let's look at it. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites down to Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. How did Moses respond? He said, who am I? I can't do this. I can't. I absolutely cannot do this. And I love what he says, what God does in Exodus 4, 10 through 12. Exodus 4, 10 through 12. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I got through that verse. And it's so easy to come up with little things to just count his plan, just say, no, I'm not gonna be able to do it, I can't do it, I can't get up there and do it. The Lord said to him, what did he say? Here's your mic drop. I'm, I was actually gonna take it and um, see the sound guy squirm a little bit, but I'm not gonna do it. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? <laughs> When I read that, I was just like, you guys ever been in that situation where you're just like, hey, I don't know what to say. And you can just literally just sit there and just drool a little bit because you have nothing to say. Moses was like, no, I can't do this, I can't. And God said, who put your mouth on your face? You think I can't use you? I will help you. Slash mic drop. God said, Moses, remember who I am and go. If it's all right with you guys, I want to look at a few more people. I want to look at a few more people here in the Bible that had some junk and that said, no, 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 I can't do it. Abraham, he was older or seasoned as I put it. I'm not that rude. Elijah was suicidal. Joseph had been abused. Did God still use him? All right, all right. Jeremiah was young. Jacob was a cheater. Jonah ran from God. And David was an adulterer and a murderer. Did God still use them? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Here we go. Naomi was a widow. Peter denied Christ three times. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus, small, money hungry. And Job went bankrupt. But did God still use them? Come on, you guys in the house today or not? Are you, did he still use them? Is he using his story? Check it out. Moses had a speech problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Samaritan woman was divorced. Noah was a drunk. And Paul, this brother, was killing Christians. Did God still use him? How about Jesus? Shows up in a manger. Not a mansion, a manger. Cruise around on a donkey, right? I feel like that sometimes driving my Kia, but. <laughs> How about me? How about me? Partied all the time, was a jerk, probably still am a jerk sometimes. Um, poor attitude, selfish. Can God still use me? Absolutely. Absolutely. How about you guys? You think God can still use you guys with the stuff that you've had in your life? I've been alive for 31 years. I've went through a little bit of stuff, a little bit of stuff. I guarantee some of you guys have been through so much more than me. Is God still going to use that? Yes. Only if you let him. You got to let him use you. You got to be willing to say, dude, God, this is out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I promised the kids I'd use this, and I've been seeing them do the motions since I've been in here, and it's a little cheesy, but we're going to wrap this up here in a few minutes, but uh, <laughs> this is a boat. Everybody do this. Here's a boat. I know. I know it's cheesy, but I love cheese, and we're going to do it anyways. Here's your boat. Here's the water. You see all the kids doing it. See? Here's the water. What's the boat doing? It's floating on top of the water, right? It floats on top of the water because none of it gets in. What happens to that boat when that water starts getting in? It starts sinking. And I know it's cheesy, but listen. Boats float 
on the same things that will sink them. There is hope. We have faith in Jesus that he can use that junk in our lives not to sink us, but to keep us afloat for someone else to see it. One, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I love it. I love being up here with you guys. Deep breath. You guys' blood pressure is going to be down so much today. And you're welcome. You're welcome. Go to Walmart, put your arm in a little thing and turn on. Um, the J.J. Weeks Band. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them. They've got an awesome song that hit me as God was telling me about this stuff. He said, write this down. Some of the lyrics, and no, I'm not going to sing it. I was going to sing it this morning, but you guys would already left. Um, some of the lyrics of this song, the song is called Let Them See You. Some of the lyrics here, let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Just let them see you in me. How awesome of a prayer would that be if you woke up every morning and said that before you went to work? God, I don't know who you got in my path today, but let them see you in me. God said to Moses, go. God said to me, go. Trust me, I got this. I have a feeling God's saying to some of you guys, go. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I, I have a feeling he's saying go. Our mission group, they went, and they're coming back tomorrow. Amen? Never want to be on the other side of that when God says go and you don't go. I feel like that would be a scary place to be. And we're going to wrap this up here in a few minutes. God said, God said, go, listen to me, trust me, and maybe, just maybe, um, God is saying, come to the starting line. Maybe you haven't been there yet. Come to the starting line first. And that's a hard thing to do. That's a scary place to be. Come to the starting line. If I can get real with you guys for a minute now that I haven't been, Romans 10, 13 says what? It says everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I want you guys to know, if you're listening, if you're watching, I just want you guys to know, you are an everyone. You are an everyone. Amen? Amen. The worst sinner is one prayer away from salvation. Right there. Right there. God doesn't use his, and I, I love our Lifeway study quote. This is where it came from. I can't take credit for this. It says, God doesn't use perfect people who can do great things, but broken people he can display greatness through. I didn't come up with that. I wish I could have came up with that, and I could say, hey, guys, I'm going to charge a royalty for that. I didn't. That's in our Lifeway book that we're doing with the kids. That hit me so hard. You guys need to hear that again. God doesn't use perfect people. That's right there for me what gets me tied up so many times. I don't drive a fancy car. I have a master's degree, but that doesn't mean anything because it's still not on my wall. I guess that's, it means something after you put it on the wall. Um, broken people he can display greatness through. That's what he's looking for. And let me, real quick, before we finish, I need to ask the question as to why you're even here. Why are you here? Let that bounce around for a second. Why are you here? She's got an answer. I ask that question because maybe somebody's just been bugging you like a gnat at a barbecue to come to church and finally you just gave in and said, all right, whatever, I'll go. I'll go. Maybe this was it for you. You decided, I'm going to give God one more shot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up. I'm going to go to a church somewhere and go watch a sermon. Maybe it's online and you're watching and be like, I will give God one shot. And your plan was to take things into your own hands. Maybe that's where you're at. Maybe that's where someone is at that you know about. Let me just say this, okay? There is no circumstance, no circumstance that you guys could be in that God cannot pull you out of. He will meet you where you're at and pull you out of it. 
No circumstance too great for him. You are not here by accident. You're not watching here online by accident. It's not an accident. You're here for a purpose, and that purpose for your life can be found real simple and easy. Before we have our invitation here in a minute, I want to remind you of Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. I just want to read a couple words here if I can. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know what it doesn't say there? It doesn't say turn on Netflix for another five seasons of something. It doesn't say get on Facebook and scroll through and take a, does he love me, does she love me, is he cheating on me, test, so it can tell you whether or not your spouse is cheating on you. No, it doesn't say any, It doesn't say go to your local place of choice and get another drink, does it? Does it say that? No. It says come to who? Come to me. I have a feeling that Jesus in that moment was just like, hey, dude, just, hey, just, hey, come here. Just come to me. Come to me. That's all you got to do. Just come here. All who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. As we start, we do our time of invitation here. I don't know uh, your situation. There's a lot more of you ins than there is of me ins, okay? But I don't know your situations. But I would encourage you, through that brokenness that is in your life, to have faith, to have courage to step out. As a believer, to step out, and as a non believer, to maybe trust for that first time that, hey, God's got this. I don't know everything about him. I don't even know who this Jesus character is, but I'm going to try it. Romans 5 8 tells us what? Tells us that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, he died for us. That's heavy. In the words of Marty McFly, that's heavy. Some of you got it. To us, broken things are despised and worthless, but God can take what he has broken and remake it into something better, something that he can use for his glory. I love this. Brian sent me a lot of pictures and uh, so trying to help me out the best he could. And he, I'm so thankful for Brian and everything that he does here. And he came in on uh, Thursday and was talking to me about some stuff. And, hey, what, what would be a great picture? And I thought, wow, this is cool because it's obviously broken, but that light's still shining. Amen? Now, I, I, <laughs> it's everything within my power that I, I wanted to sing this little light of mine, and we all just go out of here all like happy and stuff, but I'm not singing. Um, <laughs> I was waiting on crickets for that one. Listen, as we slow down, as we do our invitation here, only when we surrender to Christ can we be restored and transformed in him. God draws us to him. We, he, he's longing for us to come to him in that brokenness whether that's at home in your closet where nobody else knows about your brokenness or whether that's sitting in here in this room or out in the hallway or out in the parking lot or at a restaurant when you see somebody. Our deepest need is to be reconciled to God. His desire to remove all crutches, his desire for us is to remove all the crutches that we have so we can lean on nothing else but him. But it's so hard to remember that in the times that are hard and difficult that we have to trust him in this situation because he's going to use it, I promise. It's not gonna be easy. One, one last quote before we get out of here, before I pray. When I was baptized, <laughs> 11 years ago, um, Mark Lee was the pastor. He said, <clears throat> I remember every softball game, he still says, um, when I would see him, there's one I should have held under longer. I remember that. I love that man. <laughs> but after I was baptized, he came up to me the week later, and he said, are things easier? Or are things harder? And what are you talking about? I said, no, things are not easier. Now I'm putting up with losing friends and all kinds of things. He said, Good. Good. You know you did the right thing. You know that you have trusted Christ when things get harder, not easier. 
Things, I'm not, I'm not, I know this doesn't sound like a great commercial for Jesus, but you know what? That brokenness that you guys have is gonna be used in so many ways through the things that he can do. You cannot even imagine. You cannot imagine the things that he can do through you. I just wanna encourage you guys. I'm gonna pray for the invitation here in a second. I want to encourage you guys that if, if you don't have a story, if you don't have a, a go time, that your go time right now is right here. This is your starting line. And you know exactly who you are because God has been saying something to you, maybe not this week, maybe not this morning, but this month he's been on you. And it's your time to respond to him. Now, here in a little bit, we're going to have a couple guys up here that will be willing to pray with you. Now, if you're in a seat somewhere and it's just too hard for you to get up, raise your hand. I guarantee we've got wonderful people that will come pray with you. Amen? Amen? You need prayer and you're in your seat and you need somebody to come pray with you because you've got junk in your life. You've got some brokenness that you need help with. Raise your hand. We'll come pray with you. You need to make a decision today. We're right here. I'm going to be right here with other people that have fallen at the feet of Christ and said, I am broken, I need you. I'll be right here with them. If you guys will, let's pray. Oh, Jesus, I thank you for speaking through me today. God, I, Holy Spirit, I thank you for moving in this room in a mighty way today. I just ask that you encourage the hearts today that can feel you, maybe for the first time or maybe been pulling uh, at them for a long time, God, that they would find themselves at the altar in surrender in their brokenness because you meet us where we're at. We don't have to get better first. You'll meet us where we're at. God, if there's somebody in this room that cannot get up to pray, I, I encourage them to raise their hand and say, I need somebody to pray with. So at this time, Lord Jesus, as we close out, we thank you for coming and dying on a cross for <laughs> us so that our brokenness can be reconciled to God and we may be made whole. pray for these things in Christ's name.